Hi, Dr. Hill. My name is Albert Kishek, um, and I don't consider myself a Democrat or Republican. And I don't even consider myself American. Why, I'm a Palestinian nationalist freedom fighter. And um, now, uh, in, the, in leftist circles, we are, um, they, it's somewhat hard to talk about Palestine because, as you said, a lot of people love Israel. But, uh, you know, how do we counteract these evangelist forces that play a factor within the uh, complexes, uh, thinking complexes that are yeah. also common? And also, how do we uh, counteract uh, the uh, stereotypes created uh, by these about, Palestine, about Palestine and Palestinian resistance forces uh, to the extent that where we understand that terrorism, uh, what's considered terrorism over there is actually a form of resistance as a result of the ontological conditions created as a result of capitalism, gotcha. globalization, yeah. and all so the other Yes. Yeah. So, that's a great question. It's a complicated question. I think, one, we have to change The problem is that the, the Zionism rests on a set of assumptions about the world that are just taken for granted, that we need to disrupt and dismantle. Right? Um, for example, the narrative that, this, this is a complicated question, I'm, I'm not avoiding your question, I, I want to answer it as succinctly and honestly as possible. So I think one thing is that you begin from a place within the, within the media discourse in particular of, of any type of critique of Israel being marked as anti-Semitic. So you begin from a place of saying that a critique of Zionism is a critique of, of Jewishness, right? Because Israel is equated with Jewishness. So as opposed to framing Israel as a nation state that can be critiqued like any nation state, to say that I have a critique of, of, of statecraft, of Israeli statecraft is, is to say that I have a critique of Jewishness. And so people are, are loath to be framed as anti-Semitic, and so they often refrain from critiques of Israel. And if you cooperate within that logic, then to not be anti-Semitic is to support the state of Israel irrespective of its particular state practices. Right. The other thing to do is have a historical understanding of the way in which Zionism precedes the Holocaust. Right. That's not to say that this construction of the state of Israel was not uh, largely predicated upon the vicious forms of anti-Semitism that existed in Europe and in the United States and other places. The idea of a Jewish homeland as such is not what we are resisting. The idea, though, is one, we have to understand that at 1897, the, 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 there, there, there is a Zionist movement that, long, that precedes World War II, that precedes the Holocaust. So the, 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 the staking out of that land was not purely based on a kind of urgent, immediate need because England and the United States and other European countries weren't taking in people who were victims of the ugly, vicious Holocaust, right? So we have to understand the, the greater historical backdrop to, to, to Zionism. We also have to say that there are multiple ways to think about Zionism, right? A kind of socialist vision of Zionism, which was not uncommon in, say, 1930. I mean, Noam Chomsky was a Zionist, right? But it was, a, it was a very particular form of Zionism, which wasn't predicated upon settler colonialism, right? So we have to understand that as well, right? We have to have a historical understanding that this was not, despite the narrative, a, a, a land without people, right? And that somehow there are just people without a land that meant the, the land without people, and therefore this was just a magical, cosmic kind of marriage. No, there were Palestinian people there. There were people in homes there. there were people, this was land that was being filled and occupied. They'd been there for, for thousands of years, and yet somehow they had been unsettled, dislocated. To, to construct this narrative that somehow Israel fought the 1948 war and had all forms of forces against them, and they somehow magically, because of some kind of divine intervention, were able to hold up all these Arab states because it, it was a kind of historical inevitability, I think, is a dishonest narrative. It, it's, been, it's been historically disproven, right? We can love Jewish people. We can love citizens of Israel and still recognize that the occupation of Palestine is unethical, that it is immoral, and that it is politically untenable. That is not an anti-Semitic position. Um, we have to recast the narrative within the context of internationalism, because if you operate with the United States, it's long live the state of Israel, right, under any circumstances, right? We support, I mean, it's, it's like kissing a baby, right, if you run for office, right? Democrat, Republican, doesn't matter. You have to say we support Israel at all costs. But what does that mean to support Israel at all costs? Does that mean you support any kind of state practice? Does that mean you support differential access to housing, differential access to food, clothing, and shelter? Does that mean you support expanding settlements at the expense of precious lives and a violation of international law? I mean, What's fascinating is that every, almost every country in the world agrees that some of these rights is illegal. Even the United States, we didn't, this year we just decided to do nothing, which is our most crazy position, right, is to do nothing. 
International law makes this very clear. We also have to frame resistance differently. And part of it is because we operate within this context, it's like, oh, well, nonviolence is the only game in town. But if you're being actively destroyed, actively cleansed ethnically, then resistance is not only reasonable, it's legally permissible. And so what you, one person's calling terrorism, other folk might be calling resistance. Now that's not to say that every form of resistance is acceptable. I don't think that you should use human shields. I don't believe that you should kill innocent children. I don't believe those things. And I think there are moments when we look at forms of resistance and say that is wrong. I think that's not unreasonable. However, to frame, all, to frame Palestinian, the problem is that the Zionist project frames Palestinian resistance as such, as a form of terrorism, right? And that is troublesome, right? International law says that an occupied force has the right to resist. So when people are engaged in forms of Obama resistance, we cannot then say that they are purely engaged in acts of terrorism. That is a dangerous way to think and to frame things. The other thing we have to do is assert in, uh, I mean, the idea that BDS, the boycott that investment sanctions, is somehow, which I support, to be clear, um, is, is somehow an anti-Semitic position is bizarre to me. How else? It, 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 you say you don't want terrorism, but then the most vital, urgent, and doable form of nonviolent resistance, boycotting, divesting, and sanctioning, is, is, is being eliminated out of hand. So essentially what you're saying is we want you to die. We want you to be erased. We want you to not exist. That's why the expression Mojun al Mukawama is, is, is the idea that, that existence is resistance is largely hinging upon the idea that, that, that we want to see Palestinians erased. And we have to engage in forms of resistance and steadfastness, which I think is key, right? This idea of smooth, this idea of steadfastness becomes critically important for understanding what it means to drill down in the land, to stay here, to not go anywhere, to work around with your hair around your neck, to plant an olive tree. All of these things are symbolic and material forms of resistance to a state that wants to convince us that it would be better without us there and without you there. And that means we have to have an international dialogue, an international uh, movement. The first time I went to Palestine, I was with Dream Defenders. And shout out to Ahmed Abdelay, who's never just shoot graduate. He's a friend of mine. He's a friend of Eric. Yeah, he's the man in these Palestinian streets. And, <laughs> and w when you go there, and the first thing you see is, is Ali Jeddah, and, you, and you're looking at Afro Palestinians, you're like, oh, wait a minute, there's a connection here. Wait a minute, people are dealing with ritual forms of humiliation at checkpoints. People are being stopped. I'm, I'm, in, I'm, in, uh, I'm in East Jerusalem. Often, like maybe like every other month. And I, I was there the last month, every month before last, rather, and I'm watching these young boys being stopped in prison every 20 minutes, like clockwork, right? On Via uh, Dolorosa, right? Right, right in uh, the, the so called holy areas, right? And I'm watching this, and I'm like, oh, there's connection here. I'm watching people, framing, and part of the way to do it, I mean, I know it's a long answer to a, a question, but this is a very really important issue to me. Um, the other piece of your question I think is important is we have to resist the efforts at pinkwashing and blackwashing. Right? Yeah. Because part of what happens is Palestinians get framed as homophobic as such. Just by being Palestinian, you're barbaric, you're homophobic, you're dangerous, you're racist. And so Israel gets painted as this kind of European like haven in the middle of these savage Arab states. And so we need Israel so that gay Palestinians can come and be safe in Tel Aviv. Or, you know, you'll be called Abid, Abid in, uh, in, in Hebron, in Hebra and Khalil, so you gotta come to. You better come to, you know, to, to Jaffa to be okay. And it becomes this way that we buy into it as well. But how do you resist that? By constructing our own media, by construct, constructing our own narratives of what's going on. APAC sends lots of folk to Israel. Black churches and HBCUs get money to send people to Israel to see a colonized Zionist project at play. We have to have our own counter movements, our own alternative to to show people, hey, you can come in here and look at Tel Aviv and it's safe, but then you also got to go to Ramadan and watch people literally getting, have to take their pants off at checkpoints. The ritual humiliation of having, to, of having to go to a checkpoint every time you want to go to the store. 
watching somebody have to wait two hours to go in line, watching kids who have lived there for thousands of years in terms of their families be told they'll never be citizens, eating hawiya and having to go through Iran instead of Tel Aviv because you'll never be marked as a citizen, having thousands of years of history there and never being known as Israeli if you never want to be anyway, obviously you're going to be known as the Palestinian, but my point is that's the framework, having, having a so-called free state in Gaza but somehow you're still bordered by air, and air land, and sea, you got to see that in person to understand that the occupation of Gaza has never ended, it's simply being prosecuted by other means. We need to show people what's going on. That means we need a media apparatus that is willing to talk about the truth as it is, that Palestinian lives and Israeli lives are worth the same. And that we have to have a principal project that leads us to a different outcome. Now for me, the outcome is not two states one state. But we have to have a, but I don't think it's for me to decide because the Palestinian folk decide. So I think that ultimately we have to have a, a political, a rich political, complicated conversation about what we want how to achieve peace, but more importantly, how to get justice. And that will happen through our resistance, through our representations, through our activism, and through our, us being committed to linking two Palestinians everywhere, wherever they are, before they get the right to return, which I also believe. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.